In this video, I'm going to cover how to interface with MySQL through Python. There are multiple libraries to do this. Uh, for this particular tutorial or walkthrough, I'm going to use PyMySQL. So um, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at our MySQL instance, which is remote. Um, it's When I say it's remote, it means it's on a server that is the, that does not reside on my laptop. And so here's a quick view of the tables on that MySQL database. Uh, in fact, I can select some records. Let's say, for example, uh, employees limit 10 and view the first 10 records on this table. Um, I can also drop a table. Uh, well, actually create a table. Let's do that. And all of a sudden, if I refresh here, I see that I have my temp table created. And of course, I'm going to drop this table because we're going to actually create it in the in the example that um, that we cover right now. So the reason for you know kind of demonstrating is uh, demonstrating this. Excuse me, is that we want to know that we are uh, ultimately what we want to achieve is being able to use Python to work with a remote MySQL instance. And, uh, and we'll see why that's important because uh, sometimes you want to do more than just create tables and you know read data and pull down data but you actually also want to load data and if it's um, if it's not a local database there are some kind of nuances that you need to take into account so uh, let's start by looking at the first statement and that is to import PyMySQL uh, and I import the OS module simply because um, it will just kind of make things a little more compact in terms of um, identifying where my data is. Uh, so the so I'm importing these two things, these two modules to begin with. Then I'm going to set some variables and basically I'm saying my file path uh, is going to be set to the current working directory that this file is, where this file is located. So um, uh, after that I'm going to set some connection properties. Here I'm actually leveraging uh, environment variables and if you don't know what environment variables are I won't cover them but basically they're set in your bash profile or bash RC um, so that you can kind of store things in an easy to retrieve location uh, just kind of quick and dirty so that is what I'm doing I've stored my uh, host and my other connection properties here so basically I'm saying host user password database uh, or reference the environment variables that you would find here or named as this um, and then the nuance part or piece is basically saying if I'm going to load data, right? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to load data. So set my local in file to true. That means when I'm going to load a uh, text file or a CSV file into um, like my remote MySQL instance, uh, then just acknowledge that that should be a possibility. And then here the the character the character set being UTF-8. So uh, nothing's uh, nothing out of the ordinary other than this local file. Now notice how I have uh, saved these connection properties into a dictionary, and that is very convenient for me as opposed to passing it uh, to the uh, connect function that's part of the, the PyMySQL class. Um, so let's take a look at how that works. So now I'm setting a variable, uh, and I'm calling it MySQLCon, and this is how I'm going to call it, uh, call the, uh, excuse me, the function uh, from the library uh, or, you know, from the class and basically pass these arguments here with a double asterisk and then say connect properties, right? And so what this basically does, it'll it'll take these values and it'll just like assign them like, hey, where are the parameters at? Okay, these are the arguments that should, that should align to it. So like link those two together, line them up and then uh, select your, um, and then create your, or excuse me, pass your arguments. Um, and then lastly, I want to declare a cursor, and this cursor is important so that you can actually, um, you know, create or, or issue DDL statements and also uh, select statements. So DDL means data definition language, so you want to be able to drop, create tables, uh, select uh, records from tables, and so on. So this is what this uh, cursor is going to enable you to do, right, with Python and that particular library. Um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and run that. and. That run uh, that piece of code executed successfully, no errors. So I'm just going to minimize that, and now um, I'm going to save my SQL statements into uh, you know variables. So this one is 
named, excuse me, the first one is named dropped SQL, then the second one is create SQL, which basically has a drop table if it exists and create table if it exists. So I'm just saving these statements in, in, uh, in string variables. And now I'm going to call them using that cursor, uh, that cursor that I defined earlier. So now I'm going to say, hey, using this, the cursor, execute the drop SQL statement, the statement that we saw above, meaning drop table exists, and also create the table. So that's all that's doing. We're going to execute those things. And it's important to have commit afterwards because many times when you're doing, uh, when you're executing DDL statements, um, I don't recall exactly which ones specifically, but you do need to commit in order for them to take. Uh, it's like one good example are insert statements, so I won't get into that, but just add that here as a failsafe if you're if you have any doubts. Uh, so I'm going to run that, and now basically I have this temp table here, which uh, I had created earlier, and I probably dropped just in refresh. Um, now the 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 fun part, right, is loading the data uh, from a local file into the table temp. So in order to you know I want to look at the data, what that's going to look like. And it's basically going to look like this ID, email, password with these records. And if I go back to my other file, excuse me, my, excuse my, uh, not my other file, but my uh, command line so I can query my database, I'm going to say select all from, from temp. And I'm going to see that it's actually empty. So there shouldn't be any data in there. So zero queries, I mean, zero records return, right? So uh, when I go to load that data file, I expect to have those seven records that I saw in that um, in that CSV file. And so I'm, again, I'm going to call my cursor to execute this. Um, so it's basically going to execute this command statement, and then it's going to commit it. And, and this is very important; otherwise, the the data won't save and it won't commit. Um, and that's where this local in file really uh, this nuance thing, you know, really kind of comes into play. Uh, so I want to call that out because uh, even though PyMySQL has some documentation, um, you know, it's, it doesn't have a lot of, you know, solid or concrete examples on, on everything that, that it can do. So now I'm going to run this statement and I did not get any errors. So it executed properly, all good to go. And then I'm going to close my connection uh, just because I don't want to, you know, hang, you know, keep it hung up or anything. So, uh, and I don't need to do anything more with the database. So when I return back to my session, on my database and I run that now. Now I have like these seven records that I wanted to execute, uh, that I wanted to load earlier. And I'll just hit save there. And if I look at my file, we can see that it parallels uh, the CSV files. So um, it's all good. That's how you upload data uh, into MySQL and you know some nuanced information about how to use, uh, or excuse me, how to interface uh, with MySQL uh, and Python.